works for you in the end. Yes, exactly. And welcome to the Say Report. I'm your host, <laughs> Devin Decker. Gross. And that sage advice comes to you from my host companion, Sejan Sarawick. You see, my entire character on this show is supposed to be the one that doesn't know what he's talking about. Now you've blown it. You've blown my cover. <laughs> Honestly, you're the one who started to get all philosophical. I was going to go <laughs> totally into this opening that was like ready to go. And then you're like, I'm going to I'm going to impart some wisdom uh, right now. If, if, oh, if, 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 if you don't mind. Is Utah a two party state? I think there's a two party cell law here. I have to look into that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think <laughs> I'm pretty sure it would come down to the state where the recording is happening. Mm, oh, 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 okay. <laughs> oh man, we're not going to um, get into this. So we're never going to solve this And there's this also issue. the fact that uh, it might also come down to the state where the aggregate that we use is is host. Because that's I, how I'm recording it. Is using... I really feel like I need to continue making sure everyone is aware that we don't know what we're talking about. Oh, like, yeah, we, we have no legal idea. Legal advice in any way. Oh, whoa, yeah, legal advice. Is, if that's why you're at the Say Report, um, I mean, we'll give you legal advice. It just... <laughs> okay. okay, it'll make, just come with a lot of Make her try on the bra. Make her oh, try on the bra. Oh, God, what is happening? It needs to be right up against the skin. Oh God! Uh, I've been watching Seinfeld. That's what's happening. But yeah. but before we go any further, Sejin mentioned wanting to talk about something, and I kiboshed it. I put the fucking no. We're never talking about that on the Save Report. Uh, but then I thought about it, and then something happened this weekend that I okay. I want to I want to talk about. Uh, oh, so <laughs> so Sejin, the floor is yours to talk to us about bathing. <laughs> <laughs> okay man you know you actually caught me at a really good time because i literally just got out of a bath before we recorded oh my today God. this is like this is like and i hadn't had a bath in a few days and i was feeling it i was like oh man i haven't had a good bath and it's really getting to me and like it it is it is amazing the place that i am now compared to where i was an hour ago <laughs> um yeah man no so we've talked before about like uh some some habits that you have we talked a little bit about your uh what is it that you get? I keep wanting to call them pedi pedi pedicures. Pedicures? Yeah, that's what oh, they're God. called. Keep, so that's what you should call them. I keep, keep calling them um, Yeah, so, you, you know, you've got um, you've got some habits that, that were interesting to me to find out. And then you seem to be oh, completely flabbergasted at the idea that I am a man that enjoys a good bath. And I don't know where that comes from. That's I had just a real what I am. clever thing about you getting into your own filth. No, <laughs> see, and that's the that's the thing that everybody always jumps on that, and that's and there is a there is an element to that that I definitely consider. So I don't ever really take baths in an, in an effort to get clean. It is legitimately everything about like the like spa effect, the calming effect, right? Like I will just there's something about slipping into just a tub of hot water and just chilling out for just like 15, 20 minutes. Usually things like you um um different types of of uh, Epsom salts. That I use, I've got a very a variety at the ready. Um, I've actually experimented uh, with with a friend of mine. Uh, Hannah and I have uh, tried to make uh, our own bath bombs. Uh, it has worked quite well. Um, there's a there's a lot that uh, that I've gotten really into with with taking baths. But I mean, I don't know, man. What do you want to know? Like, it's something that I, I've kind of done. I guess more in my later in my life, I, like I, you didn't always know me as a bath man. I became a. Well, bath I, man. I certainly would hope you're not a bath man when we're in college together, no, living in no. the dorms, because like that really, that that you'd be that guy. That's the dude who takes baths. <laughs> no. Don't we just have showers? Yeah, but he takes a bath <laughs> and somehow. Yeah. Nope, he doesn't. <laughs> he drags that bucket in there, man. Um, I uh, no baths were something that I discovered when I actually moved away from the ocean. Like that is that is first and ah. foremost where the entire thing comes from. See, so there's a little bit of logic to this. Logic. There's just this. There was this. Um, the, there was this just desire that I had to be in water all the time, so I could be. You know, I'd love going to pools or being out in the rain and stuff like that. And and I actually. Uh, the first couple of apartments I ever lived in didn't have baths. It was always showers. So one day, uh, it would have been about five years ago now, I realized that I was in an apartment that I had with a bathtub. And it was like the first time in my life. I felt like a real adult. And I was just like, I'm going to take a bath. Like, I'm going to do this. And but I, but I was like, oh, no, but if I'm going to do this, I have to do this right. And suddenly it became like a 10-day process of me, like, putting together, like, all the right pieces, making sure that I had, like, nice soap. I had gone out and gotten some, like, a bath bomb. I bought all new towels. I went and I made it a whole event. I made event out of my my very first adult bath <laughs> 
I don't see what's wrong with this. I enjoy uh, it. Th- there's nothing wrong with this. <laughs> the The problem that I'm having right now is uh-huh. you asked me, what is it I want to know about this? <laughs> the answer is nothing. The, <laughs> the reason why I have opened up the floor to you to talk to us about adult bathing um, <laughs> is... I was so dismissive and I felt really bad about it. So I'm like, no, I'm going to let him talk about it. Especially because something that I'm going to bring up this for this episode, this week, this week on the Stay Report, um, is related to me, me and my last pedicure. So oh. it just seemed like, oh, I need to, first of all, I need to be more accepting of adults who bathe. So this is my first step down that long path. <laughs> oh man, you you just dove right in with me, man. Because like I said, I like my very first adult bath was already too complicated, and it's only gotten better from there, man. Like I've gone, I've gone whole hog. I like, I love uh, jumping into like Lush every chance I find one. You know, like the elusive bath um, store that I actually like because Bath and Body Work is for suckers. Like you can go on Amazon and get any of their stuff for like a third of the price. So don't they, don't don't go to the store. <laughs> um, but like you find a lush you go in there and you buy what you can because that will disappear within like the next two months and you'll never find one again <laughs> um <laughs> but i like yeah man i i got way into it you know the other thing was that um uh living in ohio uh going to a lot more um farmers markets and stuff there's also a lot more like handmade soaps and creams that they're selling at those things so like you know I'm spending half of my grocery shopping time actually at a place that is basically just like, I have uh, made this honey, and with that honey, I also made all of these bath products. So what do you want from me? And I'm like, I'll take honey and soap, please. <laughs> like, I got way into that sort of stuff through that, too. So I don't know. Like, it's just been, it's been, a, it's been a journey. Like, not one, and that's the great thing. It's been like getting into a nice warm bath. It's been slow and steady, and, and it's not something that you really, like, focus on. Like, I don't sit in the bath and, like, think about being in the bath you know like when you're a kid you get like bath toys and stuff and like bath time is like a whole thing and you're just like i i am i am in bath (laughs) like that's not what i'm doing i'm just sitting there just calming the hell down because i don't have a lot of those moments in my life anymore where i can just i it is a legitimate excuse to not have to pay attention to anybody it is a fantastic way to just like be in silence like sit alone in a dark room by yourself for like an hour and somebody's going to ask you if you're okay. You do that in the bath, though, and everybody's like, he's fine. He's in a bath. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, he's like, probably I love it. writing um, screenplays, even though he's been blacklisted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look, um, I, I can do what I want. <laughs> you can do what you want. want it's completely fine. And I... And and what the one thing that you said that, like, makes perfect sense to me is the whole spa of it all. Yeah. Because, like... I I have been known, I called them shower baths when I was a child, and I still take the occasional shower bath where okay. I plug up the, 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 the drain okay. as I'm yeah. taking a shower Okay. so that, like, it fills up a little bit, and then you have, like, some water down there. Maybe I'll sit down every once in a while. When I'm sick, that's pretty much how I treat myself. Nice. I'll just, like, yeah. sit in a shower bath and, and have that, like, water rolling over me. Shower then, bath has been a primarily hangover uh, thing for me, but uh, but I can definitely appreciate it when you're not feeling I don't well think I've in ever any been fashion. Hung over is the thing that I'm going to say. For oh, the we'll first get to that someday. Ever. We will get to that someday. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've definitely gotten blackout drunk, but the next day has not been one of those days where I'm like, oh. <laughs> but then, like, and so that makes me wonder if the hangover, as I know it, um is an invention of television <laughs> or, or like has anyone ever really experienced something like this or is yes. it just okay <laughs> no we, uh, yes fuck you asked Rachel they do some night about her uh, never mind bottles of vodka bottles upon bottles of vodka in college and they were mistakes every single one of them <laughs> we thought they were water <laughs> Oh my god, she used to get me so friggin' yes, hangovers are real, Devin, I promise you. Okay, that's cool, I've just never had one, and I drink. I drink sometimes like I don't want to live, and it's like, that's not true. That was a quote from the IT crowd. Don't be worried about me, and don't be worried about CJ if he's been in the bathroom for half an hour. He's probably just <laughs> taking a bath. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, the, and it's like it's great. It's it's a no it's a no guilt like hour to yourself in a day. And and when can you ever feel that, right? Like there's there it's 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 rare. And when you find those things, you know, you, you hold on to them and you get really crazy and silly with them. And like, you know, I don't I, I don't know. I, like I don't like candles or like dim the lights or anything like that. You know, like I might put the radio on, but I would do that even if I was just shaving in there. You know, like it, it isn't anything about the bath. That's I need to I don't stop know, you. I need to stop you. Because you totally had me until I don't like candles. Because Devin Decker is a man who loves candle time. <laughs> I have been I have been doing my qualifying races for a Link to the Past randomizer, mm -hmm. and there is always a candle going. Well, it's not like I don't believe in candles in the. I rest don't of my think life. that you it's don't believe like... in candles. That's not what I said. <laughs> I want to be. I'm on the record as not being like Sejin doesn't believe in candles. He should not be our new senator. It's <laughs> it's more the fact that like. I will light a candle for any occasion. So the fact that in an occasion that is primarily known for having a lit candle, that you're not taking advantage of that, you just seem like a damn fool to me. No, see, but that's what I'm saying is like I'm not doing it for like the the ability to tell people like oh I like I do this thing. I uh, like here we are two two years into this show and then we're finally talking <laughs> about this thing that I've done this entire time. But like. It's, so it's not like I do it just to be the guy that takes baths. Like, there's there's things about it that have developed over the years that are legitimately, like, super relaxing to me. Like, and, and I can actually, my entire day can change. You know, I, I'm getting off of a four-day stretch at, at Amazon warehouse work. It's been insane. And now here I am laughing and laughing it up with you. I wouldn't be able to do the show if it wasn't for baths. So there you go. <laughs> the secret is out. <laughs> baths. The real sponsor of the Sarah <laughs> board. Uh, we are supported by Big Bath. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. No, it, it is cool. I'm glad that I actually asked you about this because uh, you, you mentioned it and I'm like, I don't ever want to talk about this again. But now that I have, I feel like I know you better as a person. And <laughs> I certainly hope our audience feels that way as well. <laughs> Well, and this was exactly the, you're feeling the exact same thing I felt that day when you started talking to me about pedicures. It was just like something that I was just like, oh, well, that's a thing I did not know about you. Well, so I've, been getting, you I've only been getting pedicures for a, a year. Uh, the day yeah, that still. the Dark Tower came out was the day I got my first pedicure. And really what it came down to is that like, man, I am fucking up my toes. Yeah, <laughs> Whenever <they're> I cut <laughs> my nails, it's just like, this is this is not good. You already got a couple of bad choices in your life. You came from Dark Tower, and you're fucking up your toes. Oh, I loved Dark Tower. You be quiet. That movie's great. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. Dude, I am a big fan of any villain who just says, like, stop breathing, and the person stops breathing. Oh, man, yeah. No, okay, so let's, let's, let's lay something down. I've been rereading The Stand. I don't, I don't know if I've mentioned that yet. I've been doing it for, it's a I'm hell of a book, so I've been so doing it for a couple of weeks. I'm happy that you brought up The Stand, but for other yeah. reasons that I'm going to bring up this week. Well, um, so it's really interesting because, you know, reading that, uh, the images in my head ever since I was a kid reading that book are the 1990s, uh, the early 90s um, miniseries with Gary Sinise, Rob Lowe, and all that. So it's really hard for me to read those characters and not see those actors. Um, and it's really interesting because this is the first time I'm reading it. I, I've read it many times in my life, but this is the first time I'm reading it and seeing Matthew McConaughey instead in that particular role. And it's it's insane. Like, I'm like, oh, this is like a whole new level of ghosting now. Like, I've got this other, like, vision of this character. Because he's the only... I don't think anything, anything else from The Stand shows up in, in the Dark Tower series. But, I mean, the big thing is Randall Flagg or, or the Dark Man. And so, like... It's really weird reading The Stand right now and having that image in my head of Matthew McConaughey instead of whoever the actor was uh, back in the 90s. I can't even remember now. But I still get Gary Sinise. I cannot look, think about that character and not think about Gary Sinise. Well, I've never seen The Stand. Stuart. Yeah, Stuart Redman is, is man. Hey, um, you should totally check it out or read it. I, I mean, like, honestly, it's, I mean, it's always a, it, it's a better read. I, I hate being that guy, but, like, the book is better in this particular case, for sure. And, um... Is that one of those, like, 800-page Stephen King books? Uh, more than that. It okay. is his longest book. It's, so like, 1,500 if you get I'm the right saying. copy. Is that... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, it you're might not, not wrong. be something I jump right into. I mean, don't no, get me wrong. I said it's taken me a couple of weeks, and I've already read it like four times in my life, you know? Yeah. I mean, I read through The Three Musketeers. Like, yeah. I, I, I could read a long book for fun, but. But yeah. So. Yeah. 
So, um, but what, what did you want to talk about with your pedicures? <laughs> what I, I wanted completely... to talk about with my pedicure is every time I go get, I found, first of all, the place that I used to go to closed. Mm -hmm. So it was a search for a new place to get pedicures. And we tried this place in Cranston and it was uncomfortable. It was like the most uncomfortable I've ever been. And really you should not be feeling uncomfortable when you're getting your toes done. Oh, not let's, at all. That's the whole point. Like, like, that's not what this is about. So it was uncomfortable. Like, we had to go in the back door <laughs> through, whoa, like, whoa. a storeroom and everything because the front door was broken. Like, the like, big sign plastered, front door broken, please go around back. And so, like, that, we assure you, we are open. <laughs> like, like not even that. Like at that point, I'd be like, "Oh, okay, this is nice." Like, no, no, like this is like this is a weird situation. <laughs> like, uh, hey, we don't actually run this place, but come on in, and we'll touch yeah, your feet. We opened the back. <laughs> we 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 got in here. Uh, so I I didn't get a pedicure for a while. Then I was in like desperate need need of one. So yeah. I went to this place. Uh, la first time I went was. Uh, I went back we, to the same place. The, no, no, no. That place is done. <laughs> that place is dead to me. Uh, I went to this place. It's actually by the Walmart in Coventry. And okay. uh, when we came back from, what the heck is it called? Victory Over Japan Day is what they call it in Rhode Island. Victory Day. Um, I, we went there the Saturday beforehand. Mm -hmm. And it was great. But the thing about this place, and this is the reason why, honestly, this is the reason why I would continue to go to the place I go to now. <laughs> Even over the place I used to go to that shut down. Um, the place I used to go to always had HGTV on. <laughs> okay. I'm not a fan. No? Um, uh, yeah. fl flipper flop or like. <laughs> no, man. You, uh, house Hunters house and all that stuff. Yeah. And, no, not, not, clean, not my speed. Clean not House my was tempo. always really good with Niecy Nash, but okay. <laughs> okay. Not my, those that are might not shows for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what they watch like crazy at this other place is Ion. And it's always Law and Order, and the and they and the best part about this place is that they have the closed captioning on, so like I I understand what's going on, like it's all right, like I'm relaxed and I'm reading Yay. a Law and Order episode, yeah. and it's nice. But then like a lot of the time, my my massage my my massage and my pedicure stuff will be done, and I'm like, oh, I gotta see how this ends. So we live in the future. <laughs> I, I love to remind people we live in the future. I jump on my phone. And I set it to tape at home so I can come home and finish the episode. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm nuts. I get it. I understand that. I'm crazy. Oh, so the last time I was there, it was an episode of Law and Order, like just straight Law and Order. And it was real good. It's uh, It starts at a political rally and it's like an Ann Coulter stand in. Of course. Okay. And, and, Rip from the headlines. And someone ends up getting shot. And, you know, this whole thing. So I'm, like, really into it and everything. Uh, so I set it to tape and everything. But then, like, life happened since my last pedicure. And I haven't gotten a chance to watch that episode. So Saturday, Sunday morning, I sit down. First of all, you know what I discovered this this yesterday? What? <laughs> Irish coffee. Why have I not been drinking Irish coffee my entire life? It, you mean, like, you, you mean, like, real Irish coffee? Or are you talking about, like, Irish-flavored Irish? -flavored Ir no, like, I, Irish I mean, like, real Irish coffee. Okay, no, what because... Fun, like, what? <laughs> I don't know if you just started going to Dunkin' Donuts and you were just like, do you realize there's flavors now? All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, have you oh, had okay. this French vanilla? How long <laughs> have they been doing this? No, it's no, like I mean, like... Hazelnut with the coffee bean. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, we made banana smoothies sa Saturday night. And they it filled two of the glasses, and then, like, we had enough for half a shot glass. Mm. So we filled half a shot glass, and I'm like, oh, this is a waste. So I filled the rest of it with Baileys, and I'm like, I bet I can put Baileys in other things besides, oh you know, God, yes. Irish car Not bombs. Eggs. Not eggs. I will warn you now, and Quincy Thomas can attest to this. I once <laughs> tried to make, I once, I mean, well, let's be honest, the Baileys was already half drank by the time I made this decision, but I once tried to make scrambled eggs with Baileys instead of milk just to see what would happen, and it was not a that good scene. That sounds like the worst thing ever. <laughs> it was, it like, was. Um, that sounds like what's going to be happening it, tomorrow at 8.30 on ABC. The <laughs> Connors. Uh it tasted like death, I will tell you. Oh, man. Well, the worst part is you cook off all the alcohol. So yeah, what's well, the point of it, Seijin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I like honestly, the taste of you were I drunk. I like it so much, I put it in my coffee. There you go, Devin. Yeah. A segue. So I, so I, um, 
So I'm, I'm going to put it in my coffee. I watched the third episode of The Good Place. Third season's weird. We can talk about that some other time. But then I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, man, I, I wish I'd remembered to watch that Law & Order. It must have gotten deleted because, you know, it's it's fall TV. So we got rid of a bunch of ex- extemporaneous shows. So we'd yeah. have a DVR, DVD, DVR space for it. And then I'm like going through it. I'm like, oh, no, here's that Law & Order. I'm going to watch it. And I'm watching it. And I'm watching it. And I'm enjoying it. And then someone showed up on my television, Sejin. Uh oh. Uh oh. Do you wanna do you wanna take a stab a rab at who showed up on my television? Uh Tony, Tony Estrella. It is Tony Estrella! <laughs> oh my god! I was just like, I mean, who could it possibly be? And would also kind of like catch Devin like this. And then alright, alright. Hey man. <laughs> oh man. I'm the guy who does his job. Alright. He must be the fucking other guy. <laughs> oh god, Tony um, Estrella. I mean, we have to give background now on this. We oh, well, to- no, we'll get, yeah, but, but, so, Tony Estrella, and I'm like, motherfucker. Now, I'm not upset that Tony Estrella is there, right? But this is literally their 20 seasons of Law & Order, right? Ran for <laughs> 20 years. You met, they were just finally getting Tony Estrella on there? No, 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 no. <laughs> of those 20 seasons worth of television, right? Let's say, conservatively, 20 episodes a season. So... You know, we're looking at 400 episodes of Law & Order right there. Just OG Law & Order. OG. We're not even talking about Special Victims Universe. I have have paid money for one episode of Law & Order. I own the streaming digital rights of one episode of Law & Order. (laughs) This is that episode. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm sitting in... So I've never watched it. Is what I can say to you, like, straight up. The reason I bought it is because one of our friends from college was like, Tony Strella was on Law & Order this week. And I'm like, oh, let me see if I can find it. Ah, the only way I can get it is iTunes. Uh, I'll buy it, and everybody can, like, throw me some money. So I did, and everybody threw me some money. (laughs) So we could watch his scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, so, like, I, I, again, I've never watched it. But I definitely own it. So I'm like, I can't believe that, like, that just, just the world's a funny place. <laughs> of all of the people to run into. So, yeah, Tony Estrella is this fantastic artistic director and uh, actor from uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, is he still working in Providence or has he? It's been a while since I've seen him. I don't know, is. honestly. I don't. I've kind of fallen out of touch with most of the theater game. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, but what back when we were in college, like he basically was running um, the edgy theater in town. Like he was Rhode Island. It was Rhode Island's like edgy um, theater in the capital city, you know. Um, and they did some pretty awesome shit, man. And so, uh, yeah, he used to do movies and stuff. Remember when he got cut out of Underdog? It was the saddest day for all of us. Yeah, because we saw Underdog to see Tony Estrella. And it then... was the only reason we went. And then his scene wasn't in it. And like, let's... I don't know why it never occurred to us that he might not have actually made the. <laughs> well, let's also be honest, though. Also, like, we got we got over that real quick, because Underdog was a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> also, everything looked like home in that movie. It's so hard for me to watch that movie and not, yeah, like, it's, it's feel homesick. It's a weird movie to, like, uh, watch. Be a Rhode Islander and watch, because <laughs> it's fucking Underdog. Dude, um, the best part was uh, Manchester by the Sea. He showed up in Manchester by the Sea, and the guy sitting behind Jeff and I goes, Holy shit, it's Tony Estrella. <laughs> 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 yeah, so he's a little bit of a local celebrity, and we uh, we were lucky enough to work with him at the University of Rhode Island. So it's funny when he shows up and shit. We just love pointing him out, and we we should we should see if we could do a little bit more with that. This feels we like should. this is a good bit with a little bit of research. Yeah, I remember they, we just, <laughs> but it was just like one of those moments where I'm like, yeah, I'm drinking this Irish coffee stuff is fantastic, and then, and like I finally discovered <laughs> Irish coffee. I'm and watching it, Law and & Order, and I'm enjoying it. And it was, okay, and it's Melina Govich as the partner. So it's um, Jesse L. Martin and the only female detective that happened in those 20 years of Law and & Order. Yeah. And, like, the weirdest part about this episode, though, is everybody is giving her shit about being a female detective. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I wonder why there was only one season with her, even though <laughs> she's awesome. Yeah. Like, she was great, and it was disappointing to me. Yeah, well, you know, Law & Order has always uh, tried to, to get into the game when it when it, they do literally the rip from the headline stuff. They try yeah. and be really um, 
uh, supportive is a, is a good word, but not the word I'm looking for of these different movements that come through. Right. And sometimes they hit the nail right on the head and they get it right. And sometimes they don't. Um, SVU more often than not is, uh, is pretty cool though. in it's, uh, in its moves in that, and in that's that why vein. it's probably still going to be completely yeah. honest with you. Yeah. 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 Um, no nah, man, good shit. But yeah. So uh, that was, so it was funny. And I'm just like, I can't believe that. Like I have had sitting on my DVR for at least a month. An episode of television I could watch at any moment of, of the day. It just was this like real oh, punch man. into nuts. And I'm yep. like, it's hilarious. I'm gonna keep drinking this Irish coffee. And then my parents call me right as it's ending and like, oh, we're we're ready to get picked up from the bus stop. And I'm like, Oh, I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready to do this. Tony Stone just showed up on my TV. What are you doing? Yeah. Oh man. Uh, I thought earlier when you killed uh, when you got me that, the bath question. God, you threw me so bad. I'm sorry. I, um, I know. I thought you were going to ask me how my week was, and I was uh, I was all ready to tell you. I did absolutely nothing this week. Oh, I did um, a lot, so that's good. Yeah. Well, it's just um, I've realized I'm hitting a point in in my life. I'm becoming a I'm becoming a man. I am finally a man, Devin. Um, but I've got a I'm, you know I've got a pretty um, decent sized family out here now, and it's real hard to um to to be a nerdy like dorky adult like it's just real hard to do that so like in terms of doing the kind of stuff that we like to talk about and, and do on this show like getting out to the movies or playing a video game or reading a book or any of that it's um it's getting it's getting harder and harder for me to get my schedules together to get that sort of stuff to happen it's hard to be a nerd family you know especially especially when there's other nerds in the family and it is like a truly like complete like dork fest because we're we're all trying to get in on different things like you know um the girls want me to try and watch uh, the good place i would i keep wanting to get back to all of the arrowverse stuff that's now back and and we're all over the place we started buffy we thought that would be a cool thing to watch through october but obviously we like we lost track of that because why wouldn't we so we've only gotten like three episodes episodes in it's it's hard it's hard to be a nerd and and live with other nerds and try and be nerds together man i don't know well i'm sure that really the alpha betas and the pies will release pigs into your house and you'll get your revenge on them and nice. that'll bring you all closer together yeah. and as you watch the close camera footage of the pie house so yeah. like you got that to look forward to well, it's it's one of those things that I never really dealt with with my family growing up because being kind of like you know the, the outcasty types that that we all tend to be like I, they weren't into the same crap I was at all you know I could I could get them to go to something with me every once in a while so it kind of like limited and spread out like my 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 nerdy efforts and at the same time allowed me to do a lot of things on my own so like i saw a ton of more movies when i was a kid because i didn't have to wait for anybody else to be ready i could just watch them you know if there was a tv show i wanted to blast through in a night i could just stay up all night and watch it by myself you know and, and i'm not i'm not in any way like <laughs> sorry that i this is the this is the world's best problem to have i have too many <laughs> i have too many close relatives and friends out here that i like want to do stuff with so like it was just something i was lamenting because i really wanted to see venom this week but it's a, a friend's birthday was last week and i've done and he wanted to see it and we were like all right well let's do it with you and then like things have come up and we like i can't go without that you know it's just become this whole thing now which i just just it's been really hard and it made me realize that oh man i'm like i'm like growing up then that that's a little weird <laughs> but other than that i didn't do much so how about you Devin? uh well first of all i'm glad you didn't see venom because I was convinced that our blood pact was when you were going to see Venom again, you tell me so I can go see it again as well. Yes. Yeah, no, uh, I, I would have told you. Yes, that is definitely for true. So, like, not a huge surprise you didn't get the Venom. Uh, did you get, at least get to the house with the clock in its walls? No, because then we've got family. We've got, for the first time ever, there's, like, little ones that, I, that actually want to go to, like, movies and stuff now. And so I'm saving things like uh, that, and uh, Fantastic Beast is probably going to end up being a family one as well. So I got to wait. I got to wait because now there's little nerds everywhere. It's, it's great. It's, it's, like I said, it's, it's fantastic because there's all these people that want to, like, share this stuff with me. But I got <laughs> I got a plan just, now for, like, 11 people. I'm just making sure. I mean, I got to see uh, – well, let's see. So what did I do? Uh, I did my five races. Races to see if I qualified for the Woohoo! past fall tournament. How are you feeling about that? Uh, not great, to be completely nah, honest. Nah, nah, nah. I was feeling really good this morning. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I was ranked 101 out of the like 280 people who tried to qualify, knowing Ooh. full well that like only top 96 make it. And yeah. I'm like, okay, so I'm five off. But yesterday, the cutoff score was 0.81. 
and this morning the cutoff score was 0. 0.79 and my score is 0. 0.788 so i'm like oh well if they can have that big a fluctuation in a day like what the cutoff to make it is and with a bunch of those people who are like sitting pretty still having races to do there's mm-hmm. a chance that i'm gonna shift up into that higher level right like that's just how yeah. math works right 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 right, right. um uh, so like this morning I checked it and I'm like, oh cool, 101. I'm I'm feeling like I feel confident because they're first of all, they've become we've talked about this before on the show, how like they try to stop against cheating and everything like that. And they've become real fascists is the best word to use. Quick for a quick second, who who is the they in this conversation? Yeah, uh, just the, co- is this the like the like community the world they, the community at the, large. The tournament organizers. Okay, okay. Um and I'm not super mad about it. Like fascist is just the best way to describe it. And the reason why they, they are acting that way is it's just the easiest way to do it. If they're like, yeah, there's no fucking exceptions for this. You know, like if the good you fascism. step out of line, you're you're done. You get a yeah. warning, and if you right. do it again, you're out of this tournament. Like, I believe it's the word smart. you're looking for is stern, not not fascist. <laughs> All right, but it just it just feels like like this is the kind of stuff that like when people like talk about fascists, like this is the stuff that jumps to my <laughs> mind. Well, that's is... well, that's the right. That's the kind of crap. That's the problem with the internet is that somebody sees somebody laying the law down because a it's their responsibility to, and b somebody has to, and everybody jumps on it is just like fascists. You're ruining it for the rest of us, and it's like okay. Well, <laughs> where I'm like, no, please, please be more fascist. Please, yeah, <laughs> please be more litigious about so what you guys sorry. are doing. Um, no, because it. One of my biggest complaints about this community, going back to when I first got into racing, like Link to the Past Randomizer, was you're all connected via via an IRC chat, right? You need Mm -hmm. to be signed into that chat if you're competing. That's where they distribute the, the seed that you're racing. That's how you track your time. That's how they determine ranking. Like, it's a big part of this of this match. And the first stuff I did was, like, one-on-one stuff. So it wasn't a huge deal that, you know, you're connected to this. But then I did a 24-hour stream um, in May of 2016 where I just sat and played through a bunch of this one guy's, like, designed ROMs. Okay. (laughs) And, like, and that was a huge event because most people didn't stay up for 24 hours and do all seven of them. Like, people would, like, drop in, and we're all connected via this IRC chat, and if someone was, like, not having a good time, they would complain in that chat, and it's like, what what are you using this for? This is not what this is for. This is specifically just, like, supposed to be your lifeline to them. So, like, little complaints like, oh, I I can't, I don't understand this. This is stupid. I'm like, please don't cry about it. Like, you should have known what you were getting into. (laughs) <laughs> like, this guy, his name is Wizrobe. I'll give him a shout-out. He was n- known for, like, creating these notoriously trolly and, like, real thinker seeds that yeah. made you do stuff that, like, oh, if you've played the game before, you should know that this is something that you can do. Right. <laughs> but if you've been speedrunning it, maybe you forgot that Ether shows invisible floor tr- tablets. Or that killing all the people in this room also opens the door in addition to picking up that block. Like, he, he just, like, makes the... He uses the game against you. And it's yeah. brilliant. But, like, a lot of people complaining. And it kind of made me bummed out. Like, I'm like, this isn't what this is for. This is supposed to just be so that you can track when you finished against everybody else who's there. So that right. there's some link to it. Um, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. Fast forward to this specific qualifier and my first race people are like talking in that the the chat and i'm like well this doesn't make any sense right like yeah, you've, yeah. you've specifically made it so that you need to have a 20 minute delay on your stream so that people cannot snipe one another which is brilliant i am not complaining about that i think that's one of the smartest things that they have ever done is to implement a delay yeah, so yeah, man. You can't like just watch somebody else and <laughs> and and steal information from them. Yeah, no, um, it's like almost common sense. One would think. But yeah, that's exactly. Really, that's really but cool. it's the kind of stuff that you learn only by doing, right? Yeah, you only you only learn what holes you need to plug when they show up, when right? They, like, yeah. yeah. Um, and then 
and then all these people are there. I'm like, so like, this is ridiculous. And the response to that was anybody who talked in chat last night has, has received the warning and here are the new rules regarding race chat. And it's like, awesome. This is fantastic. I'm not upset about this because I've always had a problem with it. I also have a little bit of a problem that when somebody finishes, it tells me that that person has finished. So that, like, I can know, okay, this guy was done with, with an hour and nine minutes into the seed. Yeah. So, like, oh, okay. it's a little mind, it's a little mind gamey that in a way that I don't necessarily love. But yeah. yeah man. Or, like, or like the one that I, I mean, my best finish was on Saturday. I did it in an hour and 30 minutes. Like, yeah. beautiful. Can't, ended up coming in 14th place out of like 90 people. Felt good. Felt like a real good moment. But, like, when the person, like, the first place finisher finished, I'm like, okay, so I'm doing the right thing right now. Like, I have to be on the right track. Like, it confirmed that the stupid thing I was doing was mm -hmm. going to be the right move. Yeah. Because nice. I'm like, there's two moves that I can make, and I'm going to do this one. And when, like, I got the one item there, I'm like, so the other one has to be down this path. Like, I, I, I turned to the right page. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's weird on both sides of it, um, but there's no real way to stop that. And I'm okay that there's no real way to stop it, but I, it's this thing where like, I do enjoy that they've become more like serious about it in a lot yeah, of man. ways. And no, uh, that's cool, man. So they're I've taking it, they're taking it real that. serious and they're making sure that everybody else under like starts actually kind of coming together. And that's, you need that, you know? Exactly. And that's the kind of thing that happens after you have a 512 participant tournament. Yeah. And things just fall apart. Well, you know, it's, it's a funny thing about communities that people in online communities always seem to forget because they, the internet is such a symbol of freedom that they forget that, like, in order to establish a community, it means that you need to create, like, rules. Like, like there are lines that have to not be crossed in order to define, like, whatever community you're a part of, right? And so, like, these things come along where, like, these, these groups pop up. It's a little bit like what we talked with Frag is that, like, you know, they want to become taken, they want to be taken more seriously, they want to become bigger, they want to become better. It means that they need to start figuring out exactly where their lines are and like, and drawing those lines. And here's what you can do, here's what you can't, here's what happens if you cross those lines, you know? That's, that is essentially what a community is. It's a group of like-minded individuals that all agree on the same like rules. <laughs> like that's, that's it, that's, that's it, plain and simple. And so like on the internet, there are certain things that you can and can't do. And there are things that people will like call you out for and things like that. But they like to think about it like, you're taking their freedoms away in some weird ways or you're taking their, their fun away. You're taking this thing away from them. And that sucks because it's really, you're just trying to make it better. You know? Exactly. I a hundred percent agree with that. And I'm glad that you agree too. Cause like there was that part of me that's like, Oh, am I just like sour grape in it that I like, I love that if you like abuse the chat and it's something that I have a problem with. Like, no, I mean it's it's weird, yeah. right? Because like we're not like we're not a couple of like conservatives here. Like we we don't we're not we're not like rules need to be and rules can't be broken. Like that's not that's not my attitude about life at all. It's just that there does need to be some semblance of an understanding of what we're all doing. You know, there has to at least be a common goal, right? Like and as long as that's established, we can figure out from there the common sense places where like okay, you don't do this and you do do that. Like and I mean like it's just a way to go through life, man. Like, exactly. Like, you, yeah. yeah, cool. I'm glad. So, I mean, yeah. I, I did that. Um, I saw Bad Times at the El Royale. Oh, I'm not going to say anything else about it. Yeah, go beat me to fucking it. I'm see so that movie. mad. I, I'm you super know, I beat you too. to it because I schedule things. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy, right? I'm going to blow everybody's mind. I have a very heavily regimented life. <laughs> <laughs> I am like a super spontaneous person, but the way that spontaneity grows is if you have a schedule <laughs> because you're, you're not being spontaneous unless little, you're doing something redundant. outside of the schedule. Well, I'm being yeah. honest though. It's like, no, I know. It's just, it's funny that I just went on my little rant about how like you have to have rules before you can figure out how to break them. And you're just like, you know, in order to be spontaneous, first you have to be regimented. Well, I <laughs> like, feel like right. people don't, I, I, people tend not to get that. Like, I, I mean, I've had friendships where I'm like, yeah, no, we can do this and that and this. And they're like, why you try to schedule your life so much? And I'm like, well, because then I know like what I'm doing and then it can be like, hey, let's go through this. <laughs> You know why I appreciate that in, in you and in other people, man? It's because I'm totally not that, but I appreciate people that are because it allows me to be the way that I am. <laughs> yeah, no, because there are people who are there to keep you in fucking line. It's, exactly. I'm fine exactly. with that. It's why we work, Oscar or Felix. <laughs> I guess in this scenario, you're Oscar. 
Um, I don't know if that's the case in all scenarios in our lives, but huh. but yeah, it's um <laughs> no, like there there's <laughs> order depends on chaos. It is the yin and the yang, man. Like that's this is getting so ph philosophical from the get go of this episode. But I mean, like. <laughs> Yes. Move, move on. Move on from this topic before I'm, I get lost down this hole. Okay, fine. I'm, uh, I'm trying. So, Bad Times at the El Royale. I recommend yeah, it. Times. Cool. But, um, awesome. And don't fucking see anything. Like, I am so mad. I saw a trailer before the Happy Time Murders, and I'm yeah. like, I'm mad at you, trailer, because why would you blow that twist I in am... your trailer? Oh, uh, Damn, I might know it because I have only seen I only knew about it because I saw one preview like uh, last week, I think, when it popped up or something. Um, but I might know what you're talking about. But I've got some I've got I, I'm excited no matter what. Like what it's I'm not saying. even a Siegen's Gambit. Like it's a thing where I'm like, hey, you know what? That's a big part of the script. Why did you put that in this into your trailer? Because like you just stole that from me. Um, we can talk about this more, but because the only thing that they think they might be able to bank on with a Drew Goddard, Chris Hemsworth combination might be uh, Cabin in the Woods. <laughs> yeah, I think that fair. might be. Yeah, I think that might be where have, that so. where that revelation comes from. Right? Is that they're like, look, it's a little bit like that, but like not. Um. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah. I don't want to go too deep. No, into and it. I don't want to go deep in either. And I feel like, based on what you've said, this film has not been ruined for you yet. Good. Awesome. I'm excited. So, and Good, again, excited. I, there's no proof of that, but based on what you said, you did not see the trailer where I'm like, really? Really? Okay, that's good. I'm, I, I'm, like I said, I've only seen the one, and that was just like, that's how I found out about this but thing. I, I honestly really know moment, about it. And, I, and, I wa and I'm like, I'm not watching anything else. I have to see it the day it comes out. And I did, and it was great. And that's the thing, right? Like, right. I I look at the movie schedule Wednesday when the when it's out, and I and I figure out the movie I'm going to see. I think I'm going to do Halloween this week. Maybe I have to see oh, the first the, Halloween. Um, yeah, I've never seen I mean, that. I've only no, ever seen really. season of the witch. <laughs> Fantastic! I have seen them all. I uh, I I don't know. Me and my brother Zach, Zach is will probably talk about this too. But we 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 uh, we used to do horror movies like crazy when we were kids. We got into it in some weird ways. So um, uh, we saw Halloween's. Uh, he saw all of the critters. I don't think I kept up with him on that one. That was his gambit, <laughs> not mine. He's um, seen them all. Like yeah. honestly, uh, yeah. if either of us are ever on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and they bring back the phone a friend. Because they've eliminated the phone a friend, which is sad to me. It's like you have a buddy in the audience. It's sad to me to find out like this that Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is still on the air. Um, I was on it. You know that, right? <laughs> well, yes. But okay. that was years ago. You know that, right? That, that was Or do you live in that year. dream every it night? It came out <laughs> – it was last February. <laughs> Not that thought, far removed. Really? I feel like it was, like, years ago that, that this happened. Yeah, right? It does. It, it, well, you know, because I, like, got on back in, like, 15, but then I didn't air, and then I didn't record until, like, 2016, and then it didn't air until 2017. Like, syndicated TV production is fucking weird. <laughs> oh, man. Um... Yeah, well, okay, so, so you saw Bad, uh, so bad Times, saw, at, bad times at the RAL. Really, really good. Um, last night, Fathom Events, you know, Bring Back series, uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, which I had never oh, before man. seen. God, wow. that's a powerful fucking movie. Powerful movie, right? I was just oh, about to say that exact same thing. That last moment, like him him alone in the in the room, right? Isn't that the one that ends with him alone in the on well, the Senate floor, kind of. Like that's a scene in it. He he ends. Oh, right. It ends with him collapsing, and then through his collapse, the guy like breaking down and confessing the truth. <laughs> Which I, you know what? I don't even care. This movie's from 1939. I knew no. that that was the end of the movie before yeah, I saw no, I, it. I was gonna say it's it's a it's a pretty famous one. Um, yeah. man. Yeah, that was wow. so. It was great seeing it in the theater. There were only two other people in there besides Dale and I. How does it uh? How does it read in 2018? Like, oh, wow, it's sad that nothing has fucking changed. Yeah, it's sad it's... that that movie was made in 1939, and uh -huh. 79 years later, nothing has changed. Yeah, man. I don't know. Um, the other movie that's like that, that's in almost that exact same vein, is uh, what's the Robert Redford one? The Candidate. Yeah. That was like kind of a. 
it always kind of gets classified as a comedy and I don't understand why. Like every time I find it in, a, in like what used to be a blockbuster or like any movie rental place now, it's always in the comedy section. I'm like, that's not a funny movie at all, man. That's a sad commentary on the world, isn't it? And maybe I'm missing something. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington too. It's like, uh, okay, great. Yeah. Glad, glad, glad we're all on the same page still, I guess. Oh, it's God. Like, yeah, oh, geez. Like, it, but it was cool seeing it because you got like Ben Mankiewicz talking about how Joe Kennedy like responded to it and he's like this is the single worst thing that could happen to the political machine that is America and is like oh Joe Kennedy you fucking hypocrite you you tried to cover up a girl's death yeah Chappaquiddick oh god uh so it's um it, yeah that was really really powerful and great to see but also in addition to seeing like and here was the commentary as we were driving home is that like that movie we just watched mrs smith goes to washington legitimate cinema like masterpiece like it, right. is, it is a piece of beautiful example of filmmaking but then like we were talking about bad times at the el royale and it's like still like it's obviously not the same level for other reasons but like in terms of filmmaking and just like the the art of cinema mm -hmm. like is like those two movies could i could stand them up against each other and have cool. no issue and That's they're insane. like That's yeah awesome. i don't disagree like it's it's good and i've been kind of down on cinema lately like yes i enjoyed venom and whatever but it's like i was going to a lot more movies i've only seen 60 movies in the theater this year which mm -hmm. is i mean my goal set forth in 2014 was to see 52 a year so i have already broken that Right? I think so. what we what we've never what we've never talked about with people is about how when you go to the cinema you are dressed in a black turtleneck and you have a beret on and that you sit there and you you stroke your chin and you just go I am bored with the cinema the entire time the entire time it's really obnoxious to everybody actually. I wish I could grow a goatee so that this <laughs> I... ensemble would be complete <laughs> Just stroking my my baby smooth chin There you go Oh uh, God, um, sir, you can't smoke in here. Fine, whatever. I'm leaving. I will vape then. <laughs> it's it's only a vape. Take back. Oh God, it stinks. Um, God. yeah. So it's it's just been like a weird. I've like had like these moments, like really recently, where like I'm down on movies, and then I see something like The Little Mermaid, which we talked about at length, mm -hmm. and it made me just feel like, wow, cinema is something that like there's a reason why I love it, and I've devoted so much time to it. And then I see something else, and I'm like, man, what a waste of time this has been. <laughs> I well, need and, to do something else. I think we talked about this a while back, because we talked about the tourist once, didn't we? And about the idea of, like, earnestness in, in like, your actors and, and everybody in, involved. Maybe maybe that was... That was someone that was else, because I've never seen um, the tourist, so... Oh, well, I mean, okay, so this conversation is basically the same one that I had then with whoever stranger that was. Um, probably Quincy, <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah, that was... Um, uh, no, it, it's this idea that it's it, – oh, oh, God, I've been seeing other shows. Um, <laughs> it's this idea that, like, when you see everybody involved having a good time, you have a good time. No matter, no matter whether or not it ends up working in the end, like, you can at least appreciate the fact that, like – it was worth it was still worth doing right and like and you see that in those movies and then what happens is you see a movie like mr smith goes to washington as an example where not only did everybody involved believe in the project and like feel good while they were making it on top of that they also produced an amazing product so like all around it's just a good film right like and that's that's totally something that like is gold when you hit it but the thing is is like you know we have so many movies coming out a year nowadays, you know, this is not like it was 50 years ago when you got a new movie, maybe like once every two weeks. And even that might be pushing it right. Like, like having a movie, having, having the choice that we have now in movies, of course, a lot of it's going to end up being just crap that people are not even happy to be making. And that sucks, you know? And, and for me, like, I mean, the big issue for me, I mean, just while you collect your no, thought no. there is, I but it used to be that I could enjoy seeing it even if like it wasn't something that they enjoyed making like I could find something to enjoy about doing it yeah. but as like and honestly I, I I'm going to blame movie pass and not the fact that um it came it in and it like opened you? it up and then it <laughs> fell apart oh. like not that at all but just the fact that um it it like in a weird way, it cheapened what cinema was. 
<laughs> it pulled back the curtain, man. Yeah, you, it really you, like, did. You, you saw too much. And well, I mean, I was seeing a shit ton of movies before I got Movie Pass. Like that's why I got Movie Pass was to save myself some money. <laughs> Yeah, but um, there there is something literally like but like, it did it for like tangible. Yeah, yeah, it's something literally tangible though for you in the difference of like I am making a choice to spend my money on all of this. Whereas like Movie Pass took that element away, and suddenly like you're saying, it kind of it it kind of creates this moment of just like oh, without money involved anymore, like without the financial incentive involved anymore, what am I what am I actually going to get out of this now? Like it's a weird thing that like we as humans always <laughs> always kind of struggle with when things come along that are free for sure. Um, the other issue is that because like the movie, I don't I don't know. It also affected like the movie house itself. Like I feel like theaters have gone downhill as well. So, like, it's one of those things where before I didn't care that, like, the staff didn't know what was going on um, because I wasn't, like, giving them money. Right. It was just, like, movie pass that I was swiping and I'd, I'd get to mm -hmm. go see my movie. But now that it's my money again, I don't care about the movie. But, like, if the staff is rude or doesn't know what's going on, like, I'm like, why am I giving you money? Like Why I know that I you're, yeah, they, yeah, you're only seeing like a small percentage of it, but at yeah. the same time, like that small percentage could go to someone else if yeah. I yeah. like rent from Redbox or if I just buy a physical copy of it. Where like I, I'm never, never one of those people though. Like I mean, like going to the cinema, like it is an experience. Seeing a movie on that big screen, that larger than life screen, is different. It is a different experience. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, just feel like, uh, well, citizen, have I got news for you? Capitalism will let you vote with your dollar. <laughs> like, and, like, and, you know, and I do vote with my dollar because yeah. I drive thirty minutes from my house to go see these Fathom events because the place that's five minutes from my house charges a dollar more. Yeah, and that dollar more is specifically on your receipt as um. That I'm not gonna name check, right? Like if you know where I live, you know it, right? But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call them out. There's no reason to. But it's their their theater title surcharge one dollar. They so just it's tack like, a dollar on and just it's for like, them. Just tack it on. Like mm -hmm. the fact that it's separate and I can see it on the receipt. The first time that I noticed this was with Animal House. I went to go see Animal House. First of all, they put you in the shitty theater. And I don't mean to be rude when I say that. It was one of those ones that was converted for, like, they Probably call it Director's Club. No, 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 no. I'm okay with the ones that was one big screen cut in half. Because it's, okay. it's, like, a specific type of experience. And I kind of dig that, right? No. Okay. This was, like, a big theater that they got rid of seats in the middle to add, like, a staircase there are lights everywhere so that, like, servers could see where they're going as they're bringing you food. Oh. So it's, it's like, they call it Director's Club, but really it's, like, the one you could order food in. Okay. And it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. like, not a good place to watch movies. <laughs> and, like, the movie, and for a long time, the movies that I were interested in seeing there always wound up in that theater. Like, and I think it was because of that whole Director's Club feeling where, like, I go to the, the Bowtie Cinema, for example. I have no problem name-checking them because they're awesome. Up in New Haven, that's a 90-minute drive for me. Mm -hmm. And the theater where I've seen the majority of the films that I've seen up in New Haven is literally four rows, 13 seats a row. Oh, gorgeous. It is a screening room. That's fantastic. And it is like, and I, and I could not be happier. When yeah. I find out that a film is playing in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I got into a place in Ann Arbor, Michigan a little bit. No, uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah. Sorry. Madison, Wisconsin. Those are two where very I saw, different places. It was, it was when I was living in the in the Ann Arbor area, but I just remembered we were on vacation at the time. We were in Madison, Wisconsin when we when Much Ado About Nothing came out. Joss Whedon's Much Ado after uh, uh, the one that he filmed in his house yep. while he was waiting on uh, Avengers to be finished. Um, and so, like, I was like, oh, I got to go see this movie. But it wasn't, like, playing anywhere. And then we found it in this little art house cinema. And we walked inside. And I kid you not, it was like ten seats. It was nuts. It was so good. Um, it was a good time though. Uh, but yeah, that's that's always a fantastic find when you find that, and when you find little art house cinemas like that. So like, I'm used to a, a weird experience, but like, right. if you're gonna call it a director's club, I want it to be swankier. I don't want <laughs> it to be like compromise central. Yeah. 
Um, and and then to see like looking at my ticket that like this ticket cost as much as it did because you added a surcharge. Right. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, man. No, no good, no good. But like. <laughs> we we've talked always a thousand times about how like that all of that stuff really does affect how you feel about you know the movies that you see so the fact that you haven't been enjoying yourself does not surprise me after you explain all of this stuff like you haven't been enjoying movies because you haven't been enjoying the experience of seeing movies <laughs> right like i'm very happy that like we've been going to cinema world again yeah because it's a it's a fantastic first of all if the, the the fact that the armrests can go up, I love uh -huh. that. Because I That's feel like I'm at home. I miss that. I cannot tell you. I have never been in a theater since that allowed you to do that, and I don't know why. Showcases apparently let you do that, but I haven't been near a showcase in years. I haven't uh, been to a showcase that allows you to do that. I well, then be that's, honest with you. Yeah. Um, because it is it is so nice to like feel like I'm just sitting in a chair. I'm not like in a little pod experiencing this movie. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, it's, it's, it's I'm, cool. I'm all Plus, in. Plus, they charged me the student rate the last time I was there. Like, I'm like one for bad times at the El Royale, and they're like eight dollars, and I'm like, oh yeah, cool, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, thanks, man. Um, <laughs> the thing, the big thing out here that I might explore for the first time ever. I'm so excited. I've never been this close to them before. There's actually like two or three theaters out here that do D box seating. <gasps> Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking I might try and see Venom in D box. If nobody else can go with me, eventually by the end of this week, I might just go see Venom by myself in D box. Oh, you know that now I'm gonna have to like find a D box <laughs> cinema too. You prick. You prick. I yeah, love you, up? but you're a prick. You gotta let me know what's if you're doing it, because yeah, I, I know where one is, and I'll go do it just to like. So that it's a shared, semi-shared experience. Well, I feel like if it's not a Fast and the Furious movie, you know, if it's not something like like that, like what 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 is a good movie to see in D box specifically? And Venom feels like a good one. Yeah, no, I can totally, I can feel it right now, sitting in the sitting in the den, of the of that is our basement, mm -hmm. which is what is officially being called now, because last night during the Patriots game, two things were taping. And uh, the, the mother and the father came down to watch where we usually watch TV in the basement. And they're like, that's a den. You guys have built a beautiful little den down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've, they've made it so. They have dubbed like, it. Oh, thank you for dubbing it the den. That's what it will be called now. I'm keeping the robot full of lighters. <laughs> He's the best. Oh, um, man. Yeah. So I guess the last thing I want to bring up before we end it. Do you have anything to add before I, I do this thing? No, no. Sign us off, man. All right. Well, I'm not signing us off. I, I have some. I'm learning Castlevania 3 to the end. Now that I've finished all my randomizer stuff, I'm mm -hmm. going to finally play Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse start to finish. Is that the one that ends with Alucard's revelation? No. What? The one that ends with Alucard, like, revealing that he's Dracula and you knew the whole time because his name is Alucard. That never happens. <laughs> nah, there's there's a moment in one of them where, like, the revelation that he is who that he is. That he's Dracula's son? I right. Mean, and, so there's, that is the one that has the that reveal, but he's yeah. not Dracula. Well, That's no, he's not, not he's, Dracula. But he's you just Alucard, said that he's Dracula. Dracula but, well, it, for all intents and purposes, the whole point is, is he is Dracula backwards. He is Alucard. He, he is, is a damn fear. He is a damn fear. He is a half vampire. Which, speaking of half vampires... It's a stupid joke that they made, Devin. You cannot defend this. <laughs> I mean, it comes from cinema, though. Let's be oh, straight God. up. It comes from Dracula's son. It comes from the film Dracula's son, 1943. Three, I think it came out where <laughs> it's about a man named Alucard. <laughs> like, like it's not like Castlevania was like, hey, no one will get this. Like, uh, it came from somewhere before them. I think they did it because they thought no one's gonna get this. It came from it that. came from culture beforehand. Yeah, but not like famous culture, <laughs> not popular a culture. A universal inside. monster film sequel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, like, I, if it is, if that's not you, if that's not popular culture, Seijin, I literally don't know what is. <laughs> you can't people's... even think of the name of the movie. That's what Dracula's I mean. that's... Son, nineteen forty-three. I just said that. <laughs> it's. Just... I'm pretty sure it's the son of Dracula, isn't it? It might be Son of Dracula. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> Son of Dracula, which is why I was giving you shit. You're probably right, but anyway. <laughs>
So you're gonna play some Castlevania. So I'm gonna play some Excellent. Castlevania three. That's my that's my it's big the plan. Perfect time of the year to do it. Well, because Ooh. Castlevania season two comes out. Yes, that's and what I meant. I am. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's also Halloween. Um, yeah. But no, but but the Castlevania series on Netflix is based highly on Castlevania 3. Yeah, so, okay. and all the stuff that happened in the movie, in the show so far, is literally the only stuff that I've done in the game. So, <laughs> oh, so like, That's I'm good. excited to try to get through it before I watch the next eight episodes. And uh, speaking of which, slight challenge to you. Um, they talked about it on Say Report Jr., so, guys, we are definitely biting your style, and I'm sorry about that. Stealing from them now? What are you making me do? Uh, well, stealing from them is it, – it's rude to say stealing from them because I only – I did only watch this because Dale had to watch watch the first episode and then wanted to talk about it on their show and made your brother watch it. Um, but then I watched the first episode with her and loved it and have now watched the whole series – they are staunchly against this show, and I'd like to, to present maybe a counterpoint. Okay. Um, so if you could watch Friends from College on Netflix, even just the first episode. Okay. <laughs> I mean, okay. if you could get through all eight, it would be fantastic, and it's not that hard to watch. Like, it's not that big a wall to get into. I can't believe okay. I watched all eight of them this weekend. Um, but it's good is it, I like it. I'm going to be honest. Spoilers. They hated it. I didn't hate it. But I think the difference may be where we are in our lives, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'll give it a look-see, and we'll see what's going on. And uh, I, I cannot guarantee you one way or the other where I'm going to fall on this one, Devin. I cannot. That's fine. And that's sort of what I'm excited about. <laughs> but uh, until then, Will... Oh, no, I can't pass it to Will yet. We haven't done our, our actual thing. Will, hold off, all right? You Will, are... wait a minute. God, Will, relax. <laughs> Stand by, Will. <laughs> um, so if you want to yell at me about anything, like my lack of professionalism, you can find me on Twitter at Devin D. Decker. And if you want to talk to me, I, just, I got nothing. I'm sorry. I'm over here trying to keep Will at bay. You can talk to me at Siege vs. The World. Dude, wait. Last question, though, for you. So, like, a vampire is a vampire, and a half vampire is a damn peer. What is, like, someone who's one quarter vampire? Are they a quad peer? I believe that's Elizabeth Warren. Oh! <laughs> Will, come in here and, and, and get us away from each other. Thank you for listening to the Say Report with your host Devin Decker and Stephen Serwick. Please follow the guys on Twitter and Facebook by searching for The Say Report. And you can always subscribe on your podcast channel so this is delivered straight to you and you can enjoy it every week. With apologies to your mother, we'll see you next time.